I'm so excited. I really am. I'm like beyond. I nerd out on this stuff, so yes. Yes. <laughs> thank you for doing this. No, thank you. Nice. Seriously. This is We're, exciting. And how can I be the most helpful to you? I mean, I feel like the overall goal is just to always work at my optimum level. Uh, I have a huge love for language and I really, really want to learn more languages. I'm like in the middle of learning Spanish right now. I had to learn Turkish for a movie. There are some times when I feel like I have brain fog or my retention or my like, you know, reaction to it. Um, like listening to it doesn't, it's not as sharp as I feel it could be. So that is one of the main things that I was trying to um, understand and really um, have that be my at top function. Okay, mm -hmm. well, we'll look at the language part of your brain. Yes. And the retention <laughs> part okay. of your brain. So tell me about positivity time. Yeah, positivity time. Um, <laughs> so funny. I find it to be such like a funny, cheesy <laughs> title, but everybody um, who's a part of that community kind of named it that, um, which is what makes it special. But I, so when COVID started March, I, um, I was feeling like really bad. There was all this negativity around and I, I was just like so sad for people, um, not finding their strength. And so I had this book and I, it was like each page, which was its own insert, right? It wasn't a story. It was just kind of like, um, inserts on each page. And I said, huh, it'd be really nice if I read one of these every day to myself and just, you know, it's kind of a little booster. So I, at the start of the lockdown, if you will, um, in March, I read, I read one for the first time and it was so beautiful and so inspiring. And I was like, wow, more people should hear this. So I went live on Instagram and I was like, hey, I hope everyone's doing all right. Like I know we're in some troubling times, but maybe these words can help you. And so I read something to them and everyone was like, that was amazing. And we had this like, uh, not debate discussion about like what it means and what it means to us. And um, they were like, will you come on and do this again? And I'm like, well, locked down. So sure, I'll come on tomorrow. And it just became a Monday through Friday, one hour thing where um, it developed into, it starts with gratitude and which I think is very important for people. I feel like they don't slow down enough to really understand how much there is to be grateful for. Um, even just awakening in the morning, right? Um, so it starts with gratitude and then it goes into a, uh, also sharing any random acts of kindness that we participated in, which actually became so beautiful because there's people all around the world tuning in. Like I had people from Japan and like Brazil and Australia and just absolutely everywhere at the same time, all like chiming in and commenting and no, isn't that fun? It's so when beautiful. I do that, especially if I go on late at night. Mm. You know, that's when people from the Middle East or mm -hmm. from India, mm -hmm. it's really, Oh yeah, I mean, it was crazy. It gives you this sort of deep sense of purpose. Yeah, oh my which God, Which helps beyond. you be happy. Beyond, yeah. Yeah, fame is, um, has side effects. A hundred percent. It has side effects. Yeah. It can wear out the pleasure centers in your brain and it's hard to find joy if you don't take care of your brain. Mm. So, so many of the famous people I've seen so intensely, right? end up feeling flat mm. or sad. And then they start medicating mm. um, how they feel and it turns into a disaster yeah. for, for them. So I'm glad you haven't done that. No, um, I mean, I'm super happy. You also had some times where you were feeling suicidal. Yeah. Tell me about that. Oh gosh, I just hope I don't cry. Um, yeah, that was really intense. Uh, I, I mean, I don't know, I just felt like I couldn't go anywhere, right? Like nobody, I had no friends. I felt super alone. And when you're in like high school and, or junior high and high school, even elementary school, you just, you feel like your friends in the school is your world, right? You don't feel like you can survive the next day. Um, and yeah, I was just getting so bullied and so picked on and like, uh, like I had people like beat me up and, um, when, when was that? Um, mostly 
so the it was intense in junior high um and then it got sprinkled out through high school i was just so sad like i was just so i tried so hard to like get people to eat to get the people who didn't like me to like me and um <clears throat> like always like i said defending myself and stuff but i i just felt so out of gas you know like i was trying so hard and i was i was always trying to be the best person i can be and my mom would always be like you know you have to take the high road you have to be the bigger person and i'd be like how when does anyone else be the bigger person like it's it's it i don't know it's crumbling mm -hmm. um and there were just yeah some really sad times where i i didn't think i could survive anymore like it was really it was really sad i told my mom one day and Okay, this is where I'll cry. Um, I told my mom one day that I just didn't want to live anymore and she broke. And I didn't realize why. Learned later on that her dad committed suicide. So that was like, knowing now like why she broke, it was like, um, because I was reminding her, like I was, you know, scaring her not just because of that threat, right? But because she'd already lived through that. It's interesting, because as you were describing this to me, I'm like, so where does this come from? And because uh, all of us have varying experiences in high mm -hmm. school and get picked on and so mm -hmm. on. Um, but the level of intensity, my mind went to, I wonder if somebody wrote that code in your genes. Mm. And in the new yeah. book, Your Brain is Always Listening, I yeah. talk about the ancestral dragon, where some of the issues we have are in fact not ours. Sure. That yeah, we got sense. them from our mom or from mm -hmm. our grandfather. Yeah, And I believe in that. Just sort of knowing it helps us separate a yeah. little bit from it and go, do I need to own this? Mm. Or yeah, can, or I, let it go. can yeah. I move that? on because it's not mine right right yes. but knowing you have that vulnerability it's like genes aren't a death sentence what they should be is a wake-up call sure I like agree. i have and a this, learning experience, i have this right? vulnerability well what are the things i can do and a great prevention mm -hmm. of depression is positivity time mm -hmm. right yeah, i mean 100%. that's basically one of the things i teach my patients is positivity training. So when we looked at your scan, here you have a stunningly beautiful brain. Um, awesome. I, I've not seen a brain this healthy in a long time. Really? That I haven't made healthy, right? Because usually people come to me, they're suffering, and usually their brain's not healthy. But the outside looks really great. And here's your cerebellum. Really good, really healthy, busy. That's what it's supposed to be. But your emotional brain sort of stirred up. Yeah. That and makes sense. it's in this pattern, I call it diamond pattern, if you connect the dots. So, mood, I could see in the past that you struggle with some depression. Uh, some anxiety mm -hmm. and worry. Worry. <laughs> and if, th and if yeah. things don't go a certain way, it bothers you. Sure but you keep it, keep this healthy, calm down your emotional brain. Yeah. That'll be so helpful. I'm going to teach you diaphragmatic breathing. Because if you do that and breathe with your belly, yeah. and, and when you're Beautiful, beautiful women hold their stomachs in. Yes. And they wear tight clothes. Hilarious. I don't want you wearing yeah. tight clothes. Right. Oh, well, me neither. I'm doing all this diaphragm breathing. <laughs> because, because, so imagine these are your lungs. Oh, that's hilarious. And you know, you breathe so that you get oxygen, and your brain is the most oxygen hungry organ in your body. Mm -hmm. So it's 2% of your body's weight, about three pounds, 
but it uses 20% of the oxygen mm. in your body. So when we do whole body scans, it's like the brain's a little heater mm. and everything else is ghostly. Mm. In between your lungs and your belly, you have a big muscle okay. and the muscle's called your diaphragm. Mm -hmm. And you know, in your belly, you have all sorts of stuff. You have a liver and a pancreas and kidneys and stomach. 30 feet of intestines, you have a lot. <laughs> yeah. And if you ever watched a baby breathe or a puppy breathe, always yeah. with their all, belly, yeah. they keep their chest still and it's all here. Huh. So when you breathe in, I want you to stick your belly out. Mm -hmm. And when you breathe out, I want you to stick your belly in and I want you to exaggerate it initially. So what I'll have you do is I'll have you lay down on the couch I'll put a book on your belly and we'll just watch the book go up when you breathe in. Huh. And watch it go down when you breathe out and practice it. This skill, from a singer's perspective, mm -hmm. you'll double your lung capacity mm -hmm. because when you stick your belly out, you flatten the diaphragm and it doubles your lung capacity. All right, okay. lay down, put your head over here. We're doing it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. And I just breathe my stomach. Yeah. Slow, deep, mostly with the stomach. And what I want you to do is think about four seconds in, hold it just for a second and eight seconds out. Yeah, you're doing great. And just try to keep your chest still. And just over time, it's a skill to build, but you're already doing it just about perfect. I'm gonna work on this whole thing for a while. And this is really interesting to watch the book. I mean, they usually say, like, put your hands on there and watch it rise, but I don't know, this is a lot better. Yeah, no, you're doing great. So practice this okay. at home. Or another thing, let me trade the book for the anteater. Because you know why we have What's the up, anteater. Bro? To uh, get rid yeah, of my the ants. Yeah. You want to get rid oh, of the ants. Yeah. I'll let you take him home. You had a T.Y. Beanie Baby? Because <laughs> it's like you don't need any ants, so you have to have an anteater. It's hilarious. To get <laughs> rid of it. And when you have sad thoughts or mad thoughts or anxious thoughts, your breathing disintegrates. As right. you start Sometimes to breathe you your breath, with your right? chest, you breathe fast, it's more erratic. And the simplest thing to do is just get control of your breathing. So you have to practice this a couple times a day. And then when you need it, like you're gonna perform and you get anxious, or you're in a situation that makes you anxious, you'll know how to do it. It's the very first thing to do to break a panic attack. Yeah. Doesn't she have like the most stunning brain? The most. Yeah. What? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> the most. It's so exciting. This is probably like my favorite place to be. <laughs> <I love that. laughs>